I wanted to hand it over to Bob Shaw, who's been doing so much great, important work for 350 Main, 350 Waldo County. And there are many ways that people in our region are pushing back and asserting their sovereignty. I'd like to point out a few of the ways you could engage in these resistant efforts and help us build movement. To do that, I'm going to call on a few people out there to explain what their groups are doing. First off, uh, Connor Scott from the Green Team here at the University of Maine. I just want to tell you a little bit about what we're doing locally, if you are in the communities and, uh, and want to join us. Our biggest uh, effort right now is divestment. We've been working on divestment for about a year now, and uh, we just were, and, uh, we were just granted uh, 30 minutes at the investment committee meeting at our trustees for the main system. So um, at that, we're going to be presenting a bunch of uh, petitions we get signed and uh, presenting a lot of information to our trustees that they haven't received yet, but, um, and our hope is that they'll vote on divestment at the end of the month. Um, so that leads me to this next piece to end with here is an alumni or a student or faculty member at any of the uh, UMaine campuses. Please feel free to sign our petition. We're going to be out in the lobby at the end of this um, to get as many as we can. Uh, and then things we're doing more local that's not that is uh, we do a lot of work with uh, Hirundu, a uh, local wildlife refuge. Um, and we're doing that tomorrow and every, uh, at least once a month, every Sunday. Um, and we have a film series every third Thursday of the month. This coming um, in, for February is Do the Math, if anyone's uh, interested in doing that. You can find more information about what we're doing and what um, Divest UMaine, which is a connection of all of our UMaine campuses, are doing by finding us on Facebook at uh, UMaine Green Team or uh, Divest UMaine. And then there's the uh, Main Street of Climate Justice, which is a connection of all uh, students in the state that are all kind of coming together to help each other and help their schools divest. Um, this one's, call on Ridgely Fuller to speak about the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which Sherry mentioned in her talk. Um, thank you all very much. I'm sure everybody here has heard about the Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Pact, yes? Yes, and everybody, there's information out in the back if, you're, um, if you need it, because there's certainly more information. Um, and so one of the things, clearly, I'm glad Sherry talked about it, because it's definitely taking away our serenity and it's um, the other side of the corporate agenda that they're just trying to get trade packs uh, passed in secret that we will then not be able to amend and have nothing to do with. Okay, okay. Um, so in Belfast, one of the first things we did is went to our city council and our city council members had never heard of the Trans-Pacific Partnership trade packs. So we told them what we would do to Belfast. The last thing that we've done is a few, uh, someone else and myself, we went and dropped in on Senator uh, Collins, who was having dinner with 800 people in Augusta, and we told her what we thought about her, um, her coming vote on the Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Pact. And what you can do right now, every one of us, is we can make phone calls. The fast track is up now in Congress. I'm sorry, this is really loud? Yeah. It doesn't feel loud well to me. Okay. Um, is that we can make phone calls, and this is Senator Collins, so what I'd like you to do is take out your phone right now, take down this number. I was in Senator King's office when they were talking about war in Syria. They were commenting that 3,000 people called within a week. They were, they were overcome. It helps Senator King and Collins not support war in Syria, and we can do the same thing. Senator Collins and Senator King have not made any statements about Fast Track or the TPP. We really need to hold their feet to the fire and we can do it, okay? Nisha and Pingree have come out against this and it's up to us to have pressure. Okay, so here's Collins, I'm sorry, there's King down there and this is Washington and this is him. If each of us got five people to call, other people, we would have, a, we'd have 500 people making phone calls. But what do we want? Sorry, it's so loud. <laughs> it worked when there were 800 people. Thank you so much, Ridgely. Okay, next up is Lucas Burdick from the College of the Atlantic, and he's going to speak about divestment. And the reason I say that is I think divestment is probably the easiest single thing anybody in any institution can work on. I'm not saying it's the easiest thing to win by any means, so my college did. I'm saying that all of you right now to do really a minimal amount of work to start a divestment campaign in your church, synagogue, place of worship, whichever, um, your college, your town or city or county, all of these 
institutions have endowments generally and pockets of money that are invested. And by starting an investment campaign, you are simply saying to these people in power that that there are fossil fuel companies doing everything we've heard about today is problematic. And it's so much less than I think the work that anybody on this panel is doing. It's so much less than the work that people have been doing for decades to fight the ravages of this fossil fuel industry. And you get to fight people who essentially are working for you. It's your CFO and CEO and your state senator and your people who you either elect or directly pay in one way or another. So rather than telling you a great story about how you know I started a divestment campaign, I thought rather I would put it on all of you to say, if you're not a part of a rather simple divestment campaign, if you're not looking into what your people in power are investing you in, you should. Next, we have Ron Davis, who lives here in Orono, and he'd like to make a brief announcement. Thank you very much. Uh, there is something that many of you can do uh, on an immediate issue here in the uh, town of Orono. Uh, one week from Monday, on the 10th, the Orono Town Council is going to meet uh, to, among other things, consider a resolution that was proposed to it, put on the agenda by the Orono Peace Group, uh, stimulated by uh, Karen from uh, the uh, 350.org. Uh, the resolution is directed at the uh, main public employees uh, retirement fund and at the state legislature to ask the, uh, the fund to divest uh, its uh, holdings in uh, fossil fuel uh, companies. And uh, uh, we'd love to have as many of you as possible uh, turn up at that meeting, starts at 7 o'clock, a week from Monday on the 10th uh, in the Orno Town Hall. And you can come and lend your support and even say a word or two if you wish uh, to try to convince the Orno Town Council to pass that resolution. Back on the table, there's a petition for you to sign that is urging our governor to keep tar sands out of our fuel supply. There was a study that just came out from the NRDC that talks about how right now we don't have tar sands blended into our transportation fuel like other parts of the country. But it's coming if we don't take action soon. There's just the dynamics in play right now. It just hasn't taken place. But it is on its way as infrastructure gets built. So we want to push back on that really hard because as we all have spoken to, every angle we can come at, every way we can weaken um, the systems at play to further develop the tar sands helps the movement. So sign the petition, sign the postcards. Sarah, I'll just come up here to second. I know this has been done before today, uh, but I just want to say this is the last stop of the tar sands exposed tour. And it's a project I heard about last September and I had some doubts about it then. But a lot of people have worked hard to make this a successful endeavor. No one has done more or worked harder than Sarah. This is her idea. She has been consumed with it. And would you all stand up and give her the ovation that she so richly deserves. So, thank you. Next we have the friends of Piscataquis Valley. Piscataquis, <laughs> sorry, Sydney. I knew I was going to do that. <laughs> Piscataquis Valley, Sydney Mitchell. It was um, begun because of the alarm around the east-west corner. We were a founding organization that participated in establishing the um, statewide coalition to stop the east-west corner. But we basically are homebodies. In fact. Uh, Coming to Bangor is like a big deal for us. You know? <laughs> we're like the NIMBYs, okay? We're, which for us is a, uh, for those of us who've been conscious of all this stuff all our lives and are always looking to not just be preaching to the choir. It was an incredible opportunity. I can't tell you how we've had hundreds and hundreds of people enter into our lives. Tea partiers, conservatives. We've talked to so many people. 
Uh, next, we have Ilza Peterson, who's going to talk about the Hope Festival. Um, well, we've heard about some of the uh, wonderful work that's being done in our community. And the Hope Festival is an opportunity for us to celebrate all the terrific work that's being done in our community, take care of the earth, and take care of each other. So we bring together about 60 organizations that are working on peace, justice, and and we have a day of sh information sharing, great music, uh, a children's program, good food for sale, and it's a chance to re-energize ourselves and to acknowledge the power we have when we come together. And we are so honored this year that our keynote speaker will be Sherry Mitchell. Uh, so there'll be a chance to do more. You will all join us on April 26th here at the University of Maine at the Student Recreation and Fitness Center. We hope to see you there. A bit here. I just want to mention that uh, 350 Maine and many other statewide environmental organizations are sponsoring an event called the Climate Solutions Exposition. That's going to be held March 12th at the Augusta Civic Center. Uh, it's going to be a great event. Come on out if you get a chance. Okay, and now we have Reed Brueger, who's going to speak about the Credo Pledge of Resistance. Well, Maine is part of a growing national resistance to tar sands, the Keystone XL Pipeline and Extreme Energy. I'm part of a group of Mainers preparing to risk arrest in acts of nonviolent civil disobedience to stop the northern leg of the KXL. We're part of a national effort called the Keystone XL Pledge of Resistance. Over 76,000 people have signed the pledge to stop the northern leg. Ten days ago, TransCanada opened the southern leg of the Keystone XL. Two Mainers bike locked themselves to the entrance of the TD Bank and Monument Square in Portland. He was one of the largest financiers of Canadian tar sands mining and TransCanada's pipelines. It's also where Maine keeps its funds. Instead of a state bank serving Mainers, we finance tar sands development with our state's deposits. The Pledge of Resistance actions in Maine won't go so far as bike locks, but we have trained 50 people to date. Many are here tonight. Can they please stand? out on one of the tables out there to find out more. <coughs> We'd really love to have you join us. We will be doing more trainings um, in preparation for our possible pledge action and to show we are ready to respond immediately to any threat there will be. Protest vigils on Monday in Portland at 5.30 p.m. in Monument Square, 5 p.m. in Bangor on Harlow Street near the library, and on the bridge across the Passy in Belfast at 5 p.m. We will protest Friday State Department's environmental impact statement that dismisses as irrelevant all that we have seen and heard this afternoon. Thank you. Look forward to working with all of you to stop this madness. Skip uh, across the um, menu here of what I'm supposed to do. I got a request for one more speaker. Peter Baldwin would like to say some words. So, Peter. Oh, Peter, come on up here. Yeah. Um, I was so happy to hear a reference to our lifestyle. And um, I've been living off grid on a micro system and energy system for over six years. It's very simple to do. And I welcome anyone to come. The first Sunday of every month is open house. Okay, once again, thanks for coming. Before you leave, we have a special request. At each stop of the tour, we're taking a group photo of the audience with the featured speakers in a tour banner. So if you'd be so kind to assemble where Reed would like you to stand, so we'll take a few pictures so we can post them on our sites. We need
Everybody come on up around the stage. Yeah, there are probably like six photos. Come on, guys. Get in there. There's a new plan. 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 There's a new pl